Yeah. All right, so we just watched your confessional. How do you feel now? Um, God, well, it's it's been a long time since we watched the confessional, so I haven't really... Um, I haven't really thought about it much, but watching it, it's, I mean, the same feelings and the same emotions are still there. And just, just looking at my eye movement or, uh, you could see, I could see what I'm feeling. You don't have to say anything really. And it, it kind of words become camouflaged to how you feel. So it's interesting how you could just look at yourself and you can just remember these emotions or thoughts just by like a, a slight gesture or uh, a turn of your eye or, or nothing at all maybe just looking dead into the camera and just trying to just empty just feeling feeling some raw emotion and it the energy kind of just pushes out so and to you what what did you see what do you think you were going through at the time um what i was going through at the time well uh, I remember as we were doing the the confessional, I was sitting there and I just kind of, I was just starting to think about my my life and different emotions. And I remember it went from regret to sadness. And then from sadness, I would, I would think about the emotions in certain parts and then I'd pull back and know that that's not where I'm at, but to still remember that that's where I had been. And as the interview started carrying along a little longer, um, I remember I felt uh, when I was watching it this intense, like an anger towards people. But you didn't really see it. Just, just you know, like just remembering what had happened or things that had happened. But then from there, from when I started putting blame on other people, then I started looking at myself, and uh, you know, and a reflection of self. Because if you can feel some type of emotion towards another. It's just a reflection of self, really, and then I remember things I had done and uh, ashamed again or feeling guilty, but then just um, in some parts, like I said, an emptiness and a relief, like uh, just releasing all those things, and it's not really about you and your circumstances and just letting, just letting it be and just being alive and aware and present and letting everything go and just letting the world or anything kind of allow itself to take over, I guess. Uh -huh. Do you think your accessibility to your feelings and emotions is a tool? Does it lend itself to your, to your acting career? I definitely. And uh, I think through acting, I am able to express some emotions, raw emotions that I wouldn't, I wouldn't allow myself to as, as a day-to-day, -day, as a human being, because I feel like I'm protected when I act and uh, you know in every character I have to understand or empathize with and but from that I have to take something that I've experienced myself and so I, I think it's a good a good way to transfer something that I've experienced in a safe environment and to kind of really feel uh, these raw emotions and to just let it take over me rather than in a day-to-day -day life, you have to be you have to be careful, and you do create these walls, and you have to protect yourself, because you still want to, or I still want to. We all still want to be these fragile human beings, these with childlike innocence. And so, even with that being said, I put on a big front, you know, really tough. I'm uh, extremely my words, I'm vulgar sometimes, and, and you have to be. And so the people who do get to know me, yeah, there's I, I'm a fragile person, and you know, there's a lot of sides that people won't see. But through acting or through the confessional, you can release those things, still be protected, but you're able to express yourself in a way you couldn't before, and let others relate because everyone feels those emotions, but. We, we can pick and choose how we express them because you could be taken advantage of and it could be a cruel world or it could be an amazingly beautiful, forgiving world and it's up to you how you let the world take over. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. We've known each other a long time and if memory serves, correct me if I'm wrong, you grew up uh, from a Sicilian family, and you grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. Is that right? Yes, yes. Tell me what your life was like growing up. Well, I uh, so I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. My father's a Sicilian immigrant, but um, so when I was born, I was the youngest of six, and my f mother used to work for my dad. He was a nightclub owner and uh, nightclubs, strip clubs, things like that. But uh, so we were 
we were raised quite differently at the beginning. They were always in and out of nightclubs. Uh, all of my sisters and brothers, we mostly have different moms or dads. And uh, one of my first memories, actually, which not many people know, is uh, my brother. My parents used to get home at 6 or 7 in the morning. We lived in a big mansion. It used to be the governor's mansion. We made a lot of money. And uh, my brother... And while well, we didn't know it was him at the time, uh, we, I would walk into, I would crawl in my parents' room at six in the morning every day, and they would be counting money on the bed. And I'd just go in there and sleep. And we had these big stained glass windows behind their bed, and there was one right in the middle and two on the sides. And I remember I had my eyes closed. And when my eyes were closed, there was this red and orange like color under my eyelids. And I opened my eyes, and the lampshade to the side of my mom and dad's bed, it was on fire. And my parents get up, and they're hitting it with these pillows, and they're, they're putting the fire out. And then, um, then my mom gets up and she's running and she's running across the house and all the windows keep cracking and they think it's from the fire and she's telling me to go back, go back. And my dog was shot and we later found out, um, we had to leave the house and they were trying to find out if it was something mob related, of course, you're Sicilian. <laughs> and uh, so then we found out later that, I mean, the reason I don't know still specifically, but uh, my brother uh, was trying to burn us alive, so he threw, he was throwing Moldov cocktails. He was supposed to go through the middle window, and we were going to get burnt alive. And uh, so, and he was shooting up the house. It wasn't the windows cracking. Later, he came back and burned the house. It was, my parents didn't believe in taxes or anything, so it was burnt to the ground. And they thought it was mob-related. They were trying to put my dad in jail and everything. And, uh, you yeah, he went to prison. We're friends now. I mean... I use that term loosely. I'm cordial with him, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So that was that was one first. How old was he? And, he why, and why did he do that? Yeah, and, and that the question why? Like, you can't really ever get an honest answer. You, you know, you can't really with anyone. They will give you their answers why, depending on what you want to hear. So, uh, I was I was three or four, and he was, I think he he had to be like 28 or 29. And, you know, he had his own mental things going on. His mother died in front of him when he was young. She used to be an, she was an alcoholic. She was watching TV, and he was watching TV on the ground, and then she died of, I don't know, something happened to her liver, but just in the chair in front of him. He was a young. So, uh, I mean, everyone has things that happen to them, but you don't really have an excuse to do things. But I can't judge because I don't want anyone to judge me. I mean, I haven't tried to burn anyone alive, but you know, I've, I, haven't been, I haven't been quite the angel, but uh, yeah. <laughs> We've all had trauma. Yeah. Tell me, um, so nightclub, strip club life, uh -huh. very different, yeah. different lifestyle. How did that, how did that shape your views on, on, on women and on femininity? Well, I, I just, I think everything, I, a lot of people, a lot of people are just so, they have all these excuses to why they are the way they are and they're conditioned this way. And I just find that everyone's always trying to find the negative in something. And positively for me, like I just see everyone as being beautiful and we all have choices. And maybe I, I don't strip, you know, maybe if I could be, if I was a good dancer, maybe I would and I would be able to express myself. And, you know, and I know, I know a lot of people who are, um, what is a good uh, providers or you could say escorts and things of that nature, but it's a way of expression. And I, I just think sex and love are two separate things. And we try to bunch it all together. And uh, sometimes it doesn't work. Maybe it's not for other people, but it is for me and, uh, and family and friends. And I just think that it kind of, it shaped my world differently. And when I tried to do things the way that I thought Everyone else was doing it, and I was told, this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to get married. You're supposed to have kids. You're supposed to have this white picket fence and go to school. And I was never happy, and I just felt like I was going crazy. I'm this, you know, this this wild horse that's trying to, to be tamed and run around in these circles, and I couldn't do it. And I thought something was wrong with me, and I just realized that's not real life. And the more and more you talk to people or you experience people and let them explain things to you or just just empathize with them and don't judge them then you can discover things on your own and that's these ideas they're they're not it's people don't no one's ever happy and these people <laughs> these people that you think are just these awful people they're doing what they love and they're getting the shit into the stick but they 
they enjoy it. Not everyone. I mean, some people are sex traffickers or they have to do things for whatever reason. But for the most part, in this day and age, we do things because we want to do them and they make us feel good. And fuck, you know, just do a, do whatever you want, whatever makes you feel. If it's not hurting someone, do it. If you have sex with 15 men, go ahead. You know, it doesn't make you feel good. Then right on. Yeah. Who am I to judge? Yeah. <laughs> How do you think your generation growing up as an adolescent and teenager is different than this generation? Oh, well, I, I think it's... it's what, was your, what was your earliest connection with technology? Did you have a, did you have a pager? Yeah, well, the, my earliest technology yeah. <laughs> yeah, connection with technology was definitely a pager, and we would just send text messages like, Eight oh oh eight seven three five five was boobless, or one four three was I love you, or uh, you know things like that. And you'd have to go home and call, or you'd have to wait to get your messages when you go home and listen. But we were out, we were doing things. We weren't on our phone. We had experiences. We had life. We had everything. It was different. We would take we would take photos with our friends, but then to get them developed, you'd have to wait, and then that would be another experience. And you go home, and you're looking at the pictures like, oh my god, we didn't delete them. We're not like, oh, we look fat here. We did this. There was no second chances. There was no Photoshop. And now, as an adult, I'm more. I, I've. I mean, I'm still. I mean, in this day and age, I remember there was no Photoshop even when I started modeling or digital images. You just waited, and now. I had to let myself not get sucked into this world because it must be so hard as a female growing up and just posting things on walls and always just keeping up with the Joneses and whatever everyone else is doing. I don't even recognize these women's bodies anymore. And as we, it's not right. There's something not right. It's not normal. And you're, everyone's just morphing into these aliens. And that's not the way people look. And I'm not the way people look. And Photoshop, I get my makeup done. And uh, yeah, I have a team of people working for me. Someone dresses me. Someone does this. And um, through now, I know how to... I never... When I moved to California, did not know how to put on makeup. Never plucked my eyebrows. I had an agent. One of my front teeth was a little longer than the other. She's like, oh, that looks awful. I didn't even know that about me. I wasn't even aware. And she's like, you got to shave it down. You have to, I'm like, what? I'm like, this is raw. Oh, and this and that. And still never cut my hair. And, you know, I'll go on set and they're like, oh, you got to get your hair trimmed. I'm like, well, oh, you should go get my salon. I'm like, man, I'm not doing that. Why? Oh, you could get layers and shape your face. And like, it's too much work. You're never alive. You're just trying to create this person, this exterior, when there's really, it's it's a lie. <laughs> it all is. I mean, we've known each other a long time. We've met, yeah. each, other, we met each other maybe 15 years ago, and I always thought, found you to be a very thoughtful, very, very sensitive, and very interesting woman, which is why I wanted you to do it. And you're a certainly <laughs> different breed. Now, you're, the characters that you play, and I would say your social media presence is kind of a like kind of a tough badass, a little bit fatalistic and dark, uh -huh. which is who you are, but it also yeah. isn't. Uh -huh. um, I've been meaning to ask you this for a couple of years. You have this persistent hashtag, not dead yet. Yes. Tell us what that means. So, okay, the hashtag not dead yet. Um, it's really, I mean, that's it's exactly what it is. I'm not, I just, if you have a relationship with, with knowing that this is not eternal. This is I, not every single day. If you, I go into every single day like knowing that this could be my last day. How am I going to live that day? What am I going to do? How am I going to change that? And and that's what I try to remind myself. And yeah, I forget. And some days it's just I'm so jaded. I'm like, well, fuck that. Fuck this person. But if I'm like, if I'm like, no. What if this was my last day? What if this was all I had? What if this was my last day? My, you know, I go to a job. I'm like, I don't particularly like the scene or whatever. What if this is the last scene I was ever going to do? What if this is the last time I was ever going to talk to my mom? What if this was, you know, the last time I was ever going to be able to smell a flower again because, you know, my, my sense of smell was taken away? Like, let me fucking really experience that because there has been a lot of last times, you know, and, uh, you know, with last times with people. And I remember like the last time seeing someone and just her walking out. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll go have, I'll go watch a movie with you some other time. And I never got that other time. And, you know, I'm just like, I didn't look at her in her eyes. I didn't say goodbye. And she's my best friend or, or, you know, family members or that last opportunity. And in life, you will get more chances and opportunities. But if you're not careful, it could be your last, and something could be your last shot. So you want to give it your all, and if you're not, just don't do it at all. Don't. I don't want to do anything 
if I don't give everything anymore because the feeling of of not giving I don't know of like not just going fully into something and just being so transparent and just giving every single part of yourself like it's just it's not worth it anymore because it's like I'm it's like you're walking around you're being a zombie you don't this is it this is life this is life fucking live it experience it like cry get mad get fucked up do be happy i don't jump out of a fucking airplane if you want to die want to kill yourself fucking kill your uh, not not really but you know do it right it's a short ride yeah and you got to experience you have to really some people never really feel because they're always they want to be safe they want to be protected and i know what that's like in in some ways i'm not I'm still learning and I want to be protected sometimes. Like I don't let myself fully love or be loved because I'm working on some other parts right now, but I know I'm not going to do it half ass. I'm working on these other things, but some people don't ever feel anything because they're just safe. And you've met the guy of your dreams. You just mar- met him or married him in school and you're safe and you're doing all these things that we've been conditioned to protect ourselves so we don't really feel, so we don't really experience life. And like so on your cell phone all the time, we've created this world so we're never really experiencing life. If you just put all these things aside, your makeup, your hair, and all these things, you realize there's this awesome fucking world where all these your raw emotions you can experience that exist without all this all these layers we put on top, that's what, that's what takes us away from it. So you can live your whole life without ever really living at all, you know? What does vulnerability mean to you? (sighs) Vulnerability is, what it means to me is, well, it it really means to just let go and to embrace or to allow things to happen. And so many times, you want to have control and you want to protect and and that's really how you grow and when you're vulnerable when you're ready to be sometimes you're not always and i could say that for myself when you're vulnerable you allow things to affect you and you really you don't know what's going to happen and that's the scary part of vulnerability like you just you just don't know and it could break you it could make you but you have to allow the possibility of both and uh, so to be vulnerable yeah you have to you have to build yourself Protect yourself in a way, not walls, but in a way that you know sometimes that you can still get back up, that it won't, but you have to be willing to just lose every single thing that you ever really thought was something you identify with, all sense of self. So to be vulnerable, you could lose all sense of self and you have to redefine who you are. And that's the beauty. Like you're a different person every day. You know, you are not the same person you were yesterday and you won't be the same person you are, you know, tomorrow. If you allow life to affect you and to be vulnerable and it's a hard thing to do and sometimes you just have to pick what part of my life do am I going to allow to be vulnerable and to allow to grow because you can't do it with everything. You might be like you're going to be a mess but take it like little bits by little bits like oh what you know what am I going to try today and you experience it and sometimes it's scary as fuck and sometimes you'll you'll go back and I'm like okay this this is not working I'm not ready for this but at least you allowed it. And, uh, where, where do you think you could use work and, and, and allowing your guard to be down? <laughs> well, definitely, where, where I could use work is definitely with with people. And, uh, you know, I like to portray this hard, tough woman. And uh, I just don't allow as much connection as I could uh, in certain things. Like, I'm working on bettering myself because I could get quite crazy and do things uh and it doesn't really help me. So I want to do things to help myself more. But with opening up to people, uh, particularly relationships, I would always get in relationships in the past where it would be controlling. And then I wouldn't exist. I would just be what they wanted me to be because I just didn't feel like I needed to be anyone. So it was fine. I would, you know, I could be whoever they wanted me to be. And But now I don't allow myself to be anyone people get to know. Not entirely. It's not entirely true, but to open up to a level where I can be transparent with a person and still feel like I'm getting the respect I deserve because as a woman or a man or anything, and I can't just say woman, for a man to be vulnerable is diff- difficult too. To express I really care about someone and or for a man to cry or for me to cry, you know, it's hard because... What if a person doesn't feel the same way? What if, what if it's just one-sided? And God, that would hurt. Like, you know, how could I be so blind 
to not see this. And uh, But through doing something like that, you can find out where you're blind, where you're not even seeing the person. It has nothing, that person's not giving, I mean, not in all cases, they're not giving you this false sense of hope. So maybe you're, you're seeing it because you're not true to yourself. You're seeing a reflection of self. You're seeing a lie because you're living a lie. And, uh, and that's the hardest thing to see. You, like, <laughs> why are mirrors so ugly sometimes? Because it's your own reflection, you know? It's a, it's a crazy thing. The only, the only anger, or it's everything. It's about, about you. So once you let go of those parts of you, you can actually see a person for who they truly are. We don't see them as they are. We see them as we are. And, uh, and so, yeah. <laughs> do, you think, do you think the world is lonelier because of all this stuff? Like, just to, just to roll back a little bit. You know, around the time I met you and even before that, we would, go, we would all go out. We were in our 20s. We'd go out 300 nights a year. And I'd come <laughs> home with, like, lots of numbers. Not just girls, but uh -huh. guys, too. Like, yeah. you meet new people. Then you'd call them on the telephone. And you'd be like, hey, what's going on today? Oh, there's yeah. a party in this canyon. And then there's an after hours here. Uh -huh. And we all interface yeah we would be like let's meet here at this time and you'd talk and you'd meet and it'd be face to face yeah. and, there, and there were no screens there was none of this bullshit oh my God. and the relationships were more meaningful and now even with people i love and care and respect about i'll go out for lunch yeah and everyone's just looking at their screens and it God. seems like no one's happy and everyone's trying to curate the self-image uh -huh. and I don't know. Can we talk about that a little bit? Yeah. What's your take on all no, that? No, I, I do. I, I agree with it 100%. And um, I, I find people without social media, without the, they, they do have more fun. And a lot of us have to do it. But going out to lunch, everyone's like, let's just take a selfie or, you know. Um, and then they take it and then looking at images. and But no one's connecting. And, like, the thing about giving out phone numbers, meeting people, going out because you want to find this person. And the biggest thing we had for misconnections was, like, Craigslist back in the day. And now you, all you need is, oh, let me get your Instagram and you find out how this and this person's connection. We don't, we don't allow ourselves to discover anyone. We have everyone figured out. We think we, ha we have everyone's fake idea of what they created for themselves as I'm just as guilty. You know who I am. Figured out because we don't, we don't have to take the time to learn. It's even like learning. When we were a kid, if we wanted a record or we didn't know the song, we'd have to sing it to the person in the record store. We'd have to go there and find it. Now it's like Shazam. Oh, this is this artist. Da, da, da. Uh, this is how you do this. Let me just Google it. And everyone's an expert at everything. And if you really wanted, if you were interested in something, fuck, you had to prove that you were interested in something. You had to go out there. You had to research it. You had to have an encyclopedia. Go to the library. And to go to a record store and be like, this is a song. Dance around. And the guy's like, oh, well, you're not singing it right. I'm not going to sell you that record. And you had to go back in and prove to him, no, 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 I like this artist. Please. Like, wait, come back, kid, when you're ready for this album. Now everything's just given to you. Bliss on tap, you know? And we're just... Over, overly, just insult everyone. We're just gimme, 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 and really, we have no, we don't have any respect for what we're getting. We're just like I just, you know, we had to earn it before. We did a whole like, I used to, you know, I'd get an allowance every week, and and that would allow for me to buy if I was really stretching it, I could buy one or two albums a week. <laughs> and to me, music, I think, meant so much to me because I invested in it. Like, mm -hmm. like I would buy a record, and I, you know, and I had. A, artwork that was this big and I would listen to it and we'd talk about it and we'd make tapes for each other and it was and we created culture and now we have a whole generation of people growing up and I know I sound like that angry old man <laughs> shit, we have whole generations of people stealing music and movies and just thinking that all of this stuff is free and I think when you're not paying for something you have you, you just naturally place less value on it. Uh -huh. When you have to work for something, whether it's an album or a person's uh -huh. affection, yeah. um, it's, I think we value it less. And, yeah. and, and because we have all this- I, I like how you related that to a person's affection too, yeah. yeah. And, uh -huh. and, are, and aren't we, are we maybe lonelier because of it? Yeah, I think 100% we're, we're lonelier, uh-huh. And uh, yeah, it's, we're lonelier, we, and we work ourselves up. First of all, yeah, everything is just free. We don't have to get to know anyone. We um, we go on their Instagram. We do this. We do it. We don't have to work for information. We don't have to work to get to know anyone. We can look at their fucking Aunt Sarah from two Christmas ago when they went to Vail. I don't know. We could do that, and we don't have to earn the right to know about their history or anything, and we don't have to... 
it's like everything's just so given to us, and we don't really give a fuck anymore. And no one even talks on the phone much less. No, like person no one answers the phone. I, I have a few friends that are like phone people, and I like talking on the phone. My phone will ring. I'll be like, hey, what the hey. fuck is that? <laughs> Hey, uh-huh. like, we're talking, but some people, you'll call them and they'll be like, what, what are you doing? What time are we meeting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was talking, I was talking on the phone today and, uh, you know, I have, I had to put on speaker because I, I dropped uh, food or something on the phone, but, um, you know, it's so difficult. I called, I was calling a girl one day, my friends were texting her and they're wondering if she's going to a party. I'm like, fuck, dude. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm going to call her. And then she sent me a text. She's like, why did you, why did you call? Did something happen? Or like, just, uh, I'm like, no, I was just seeing where you're at. She's like, well, I was going to text you guys back. I'm like, but you answered the phone. You know, let's do that. But, um, and then even when you're in front of people, it's just uh, text messaging, everything, pictures, and everything's fake, you know? I don't know. <laughs> everything's fake from even quotes people post. You have quotes, quotes that people haven't even fic- fucking written that, you know? Everyone thinks there's this one Francis Scott Fitzgerald quote. I'm like, this from Benjamin Buttons. It's not It's not even him. No. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, but we don't know, and we think we're getting this information, and it's the same thing with the media, and uh, I, it's it's all it's all fake, and the only real interaction you have is really in front of you. It's a thing that you can't look online and discover, and uh, I, I just you know I create whoever. If you don't want to get to know me, then you will know the person I created. But I'm here, you know. I'm available. Are you open? I am. I am. Yeah. I mean, it depends on how. I mean, I know you a long time, yeah. so I feel like, you, like you're like uh-huh. you open. But do people open. really want to get to know you, you know? Do I go on dates? Do I not sleep with some guy a million times or, or a girl or whatever, you know? <laughs> and do they know nothing about me? Absolutely nothing. Have they ever asked me a question? You ask me a question, I'll tell you the truth, you know, if you really want to know. But are most people just waiting for their turn to talk or do they even care at all? Do you ask them? I do. I do, you know? And it depends on... Depends on if they want to be asked. And sometimes when you ask questions, I was with some girl the other day and uh, she's young. She's like, oh, I hate it when my friend comes over. You know, I just want to talk about the weather or clothes. And she's like, they'll ask about how I feel about a certain thing. And like her and her friends were like, yeah, I hate when they do that. And they're asking about theology or religion. Like, what the fuck? We're just here for a good time. I'm like, well, it's, it's interesting that some people just want to talk about people instead of ideas because really that's, we're just, we're dumbing ourselves down. We don't exist. We're talking about, you know, these people. And uh, really, it's ideas or feelings or thoughts. And there's so much, there's so much to be expressed. I don't know. We could talk about our experience. But really, it's what we got from the experience and how, you know, it made us grow as a person. Is that, yeah. What's beauty to you and how do you think it's changed from, from your first realization of it to now. Yeah, beauty for me, from what it's changed. Um, what beauty was growing up, I mean, I, I couldn't even tell you because it's something so different now, you know? Uh, I remember looking at people that I thought were beautiful, like uh, Leticia Costa, like, yeah, uh-huh, and, uh, and, you know, Kate Moss and all of these models, but... And I would see them as beautiful, and uh, but now, now I look at it, and everyone once everyone changes when you see these raw images of people at the beginning, you know, and you see these raw beautiful actresses, um, and everyone, even from the Kardashians to Sofia Vergara or whatever, but their body image changes, and they try to perfect themselves. And I'm not saying that's wrong, but you know, it really it's. It's hard to look at because unless you have all the money in the world, unless you have this all the time to do your makeup and the perfect clothes and everything, no one's like that. And yeah, no one's like all these supermodels, but we already knew that. But every single person, you know, uh, even uh, normal day-to-day people, I remember I looked at... Um, and this young girl, she's in my family, her picture she was posting on Instagram. And it's always photoshopped and you can tell there's millions of filters. And I asked her to send a picture and she, I was like, can you send, send me something without all these, this Photoshop? I'm like, yeah, fake. I, you could tell. And she's like, oh, well, that, that is. And I'm like, and I can tell. I can see it. I'm like, what's wrong with the way that you look? And, you know, people shrink their nose and large their lips. And I've been guilty of doing that right when I found out. But I'm like, that's not the way I look. And, uh, you know, like, yeah, I have cellulite. I have these things. But how hard is it just... There is no real beauty anymore. Real beauty is just this, it's everything's been washed out, you know? And and for men, 
Men don't have to wear makeup. Men don't have to worry about their eyeliner and so much. But now, you know, now they worry about, I guess, Photoshop they could or different filters. But for a woman, on every fucking day to have to get up and do makeup, it, like, God damn, like, do you guys, do you, you find this attractive? I mean, don't you want to see what a re woman really looks like? Or you wake up in a bed and her hair's all messy, she has no makeup, and they're doing it, and, and, you know, it's like, what do I look like? Is my pose good? This and that. And I was never self-aware. I become more self-aware. Even when I was a model, I wasn't really aware. I was just feeling things and doing it. Now it's like, when the pose this way and that, and this makes your body angle look great, and your hips will be smaller. I'm like, well, fuck, man. It's just yeah, too you much. You were the only ones doing it. Uh -huh. The only people that were doing it professionally. Mm -hmm. Now everybody's doing photo shoots, yeah. trying to emulate people, and taking thousands of selfies. Now, me as a man, maybe I'm different. You know, all men are different. But uh -huh. to me, if I'm going through a dating app or, or looking at someone's social media that I just met, if I see Snapchat filters and dog noses and retouching and dog extensions, I, 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 the, if I see only that stuff or, an, or a 50 part Instagram story of selfies, uh -huh. I'm like, this person has mental illness. This is yeah. not someone I want to know. This is a crazy person uh -huh. who, who, through their narcissism, feels sad to me. Yeah, it is. Like, how, does, how does all this stuff, do you think, you're not a mother, but um, how do you think it's shaping this this next generation of kids? It's, I mean, it's it's what it is. It's destroying us. I mean, we might as well be cyborgs walking around, you know. Let's just create this better version of herself and have the computer, you know, just learn our thoughts and it would just be perfect and I could just live in this tube, but I want to create this image of me. You know, we're going to be living this test tube, so we want, you know, well, it's just like we're not even alive. We're just these shells or, oh, my God, it's awful. And I actually got a guy sending me, he'd send me, like, messages, but he was using filters, like, with little stars around his head and stuff. I'm like, what is going on? on you know I'm like I don't find that attractive and I'm oh, yeah <laughs> and it is it's sad and it's sickening like you can't even show who you really are because you're so insecure that people might not like it you know and and even like I love tattoos and I've been getting them since I was 13 a long time ago but now it's like I'm creating this and this this symbolizes what this means and like we don't have to say that because we're just like it's curating it's a shtick isn't yeah, it yeah and it's just not like really. on your video when I was watching the confessional it's like you say nothing and sometimes you, you just sit there and you stare in the camera and it's just like you can feel the energy. And sometimes the words and these things that we think actually they express ourselves is being taken away because we don't need anything. Words don't have to. These things don't really need to express anything. I could look. I watched that video. I could look into my eyes watching it and I could tell exactly what I was thinking. And that's really, it's something really beautiful because we don't need all of this sense of expression, you know, like. We could just sit here and stare at each other and just feel and connect. I was reading something about trees the other day and how they communicate with other trees just by these energy fields. And they, they can warn other trees about like danger and things. And I'm like, what if we just sat still as humans and we allowed ourselves to just communicate that way? Yeah, we we're communicating all these other it's ways. All there. Uh -huh. It's all there, and that's that's the thing. I, when I started this crazy project three and a half years ago, I thought, oh, you know, I have young people, I have old people, I have rich people, I have poor people, and I thought I was going to find out how different you all were. And what I really found it out, found out is every we're all each other. We're all the entire spectrum of human frailty, and I think that that's why I kind of can't stop doing these because I uh -huh. never get tired of faces, and I never don't feel uh -huh. someone else. Yeah. And when everyone's like. What's the direction? What's the motivation? I'm like, there's none of that shit. Don't take your eyes off the center of the lens for 10 minutes. Uh -huh. I just want to know you better. Yeah. And some people are like, cool. Uh -huh. Most people are like, wait a minute. Yeah. Because they don't know, you know, that eye contact is everything. It is. It is. You lose yourself. Like, you become fragile. You become... Um, like you are open to things and like we were saying earlier like sometimes you, you're not ready for that because it's so raw and it's so like you can't people can't even look at themselves in the mirror they can't they won't allow themselves to do it because they will break and they know that and that's and just talking to you and we're talking about if we don't have words if we just sat here and stared at each other uh, if we just really used our emotion instead of all these things we think are ways to communicate I mean fuck yeah, we, would, we wouldn't know what to do yourself. We'd be drained in energy. We think we're giving our energy to all these things, but I'm like, the real energy is just right here in this calmness, this presence. And it's just like, if you allow yourself to feel it, like it's there. You know, words, words, doing your hair, makeup, these things are not expression. That's not it.
I didn't know if this was going to work on other people because I'm just like, am I just a weird person that just likes to you know, shoot people's faces? Is everyone mm-hmm. else but me going to care? Because I've been through this with you and everybody mm-hmm. else, but no one else has. And I found yeah. out it's exactly the same thing. I got a bunch of people together at this, in this, one of those movie theaters at Warner Brothers, one of those screening rooms. Uh-huh. I'm, like, I'm just going to put these on and see how people react. Yeah. So I first put one on of uh, this, this singer girl who laughs the entire time. And I'm looking over my shoulder of just the white from the screen and uh-huh. people's faces in the room and everyone starts laughing. Uh-huh. And then I put someone on who cried her eyes out with tears rolling and snot coming out of her nose for 10 minutes. Uh-huh everyone in the theater started crying. Uh-huh. And what I've learned is the human brain doesn't make a distinction between a two-dimensional black and white image and a person in front of them. It's eye contact that connects us, and that's what I learned in this whole process. And I, and I, and I think it just reinforces everything that you just said. Yeah. And it's funny that you brought up the tree thing. Uh-huh. Have you read the book? No. What book? I'm, I'm buying you this book. It's, uh-huh. it's, it, 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 I think it was only available in German for a couple of years, uh-huh. and someone told me about it, and I bought the English translation, and I think it's called The Secret Language of, of Trees, and it's written by this arborist who spent his entire life in the forest in, in Germany or Austria, I think Germany, and he explains all of these things, how once a tree gets cut down, all the trees around it uh-huh. realize something's been hurt, and they pump glucose into its roots from all around. When a caterpillar starts eating a leaf from uh-huh. one type of tree, trees even 50 miles away of the same breed will start producing this neurotoxin for caterpillars to protect itself. It'll be like, hey, this thing's eating me. And they'll be like, make that shit to save us all. Oh my God, I had no can- idea. The canopy won't close. A trees will grow to a certain point and then they'll stop because they won't cut off their own sunlight and they're, it's really brilliant. And the moss and the lichen and the mold and the trees and the bushes and the flowers and the bugs, they all help each other because they're all in it together. That is amazing. They're, I would love to read as that. as involved as we are. I'm sending you that you're going to give me your address after this. I'm going to tell you the book from Amazon. So, oh my God. You're going to love this book. And it's, it, you, you'd be like, I'm not reading a book about trees. I had this book. I couldn't put it down. I was up till four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I just read one thing, one short thing the other day. You know, I'm on this fact site and I read that and I just, you know, stopped right there and it was just one short paragraph and I just kept thinking about it. And, you know, one little sentence or paragraph could, could just trigger so many things. I'm just like, wow. And they communicate just through this energy and you're saying that. And it just, if you allow things to affect you, you know, it's it's insane. It's incredible. Now you're telling me this book. I have to read it. It will blow your uh-huh. mind because you, you, you realize, I'm not going to put this in the doc, but uh-huh. it will, but someone for my birthday bought me an ayahuasca ceremony, uh-huh. which... That, that's a whole evening's conversation. Oh my God! It's people have been telling me about that recently. They want to do it. I yeah. Fucking hated it, did, I, yeah. Yeah. Marina Abramovich did it, and she like shit and pissed all over herself. You did. <laughs> yeah. I, I was myself, scared. But I had to shit yeah. a lot and then throw up. Really? Oh, throwing up. Oh yeah, she threw up. That's what. Yeah. Uh huh. So, um, but you see, one of the one of the benefits, and I thought it was look, I'd done mushrooms and acid, yeah, and peyote. So I've already seen uh-huh. the weave of the universe. So yeah. that's what I think everyone benefits from that I already knew. So. Yeah. Um, but you realize, we all say, oh, there is no out there and in here. We say that, but with these types of experiences, you actually see it. You see where you and me and that eucalyptus tree are all connected and we're all uh-huh. changing energy and we're all one structure. There is uh-huh. no out there and in here where those trees, like uh-huh. we think we're so evolved because we invent things, but yeah. we don't know anything. Like we really are just this uh-huh. one yeah. Organism. You're right. You're right. And if you allow yourself to just, if you just think on it and just have that thought and just sit there, even when we start talking about that, you can feel like energy vibrations in a different field, you know? And when you were talking about the trees and how when one is cut down and things like that, and I'm, I'm just even hearing it, but then I could see it and I could feel like this type of energy, like this, you know, in my mind and just through my body, this interconnected, you know? Uh, it's hard for us to sort of to, you know, we, I think we avoid thinking about it because it's so esoteric, uh-huh. but I mean, look how many times have you thought about someone that you haven't spoken to in a few years and then they call you like we yeah. really, we have so much more power than we think we do. And we're so unevolved. But yet we uh-huh. think we know everything. Yeah. And, and people talk about the lot and it's not, it doesn't have to do being psychic or anything, but if you really allow yourself to connect to things, sometimes when you really want something like 
you know, it, it's not like, oh, you don't have to think it's the secret. The universe opens up. It's like, no, you've asked for something. And if you really have this feeling and this emotion and you just say, like, you want to get something and, you know, you do all, you will get whatever, like everything is, you create your own universe. You're really like, you're the puppeteer, you know, and uh, all these things you allow, everything, it's, it's really quite simple. Like if you allow anything to happen, I mean, I, I don't it's even know how to, ex- yeah, it? it is, it's easy to forget and you can on a day-to-day basis, but sometimes you'll be connected and you'll like, for whatever reason, it's, and then you're it just happens, flow. you're in the flow, but then you'll pull back, but you, it's so easy and you're like, well, fuck, like that really happened and you're just like, it is that easy, but we've created so many barriers. of these, yeah, barriers that to break us away from it and so it's so hard to just stay in that, that, you know, realm. It's so hard to stay there, but once you, when you're there, Everything's just coming in. Like this energy is connected. Um, You're a great manifester. How do you do it? Or at least from the yeah. outside, like everyone's life looks different. But uh-huh. to me, it looks like you have, you you are making this whole yeah. crazy world work. Yeah, I mean, I I have to admit, like I do. I didn't think I was manifesting at the beginning, but um, like when I was a kid, I remember I didn't know what I was doing, but I'm like, I want to be an actress. I'm doing this. I'm moving to LA. I didn't have any money. I had a suitcase. I came out here. So I was living in. Like 54th and Crenshaw, I'm like, I'm gonna get a job. My first job was Madonna Hollywood, but I didn't second guess myself. I wasn't like, oh, I, I don't know if I could do this oh, or that. Music video? Yeah, uh huh. The Hollywood right. one. Everyone yeah, comes yeah. to, yeah, it was my first job here, you know? Wow. And then she, you know, but, but I didn't question my talent. I didn't question anything. I'm like, I'm just, I'm gonna get it. And then things would open up for people. I mean, I still don't even know exactly how I do it. And I'm not going to try and, like, it doesn't have to be step by step thing. It's just like, I'm just open to things and I just feel I want something, I want something. And then other things will connect like, oh, this is how I'll get this. I'm not trying to trample over people. I don't do things the wrong way. But if I keep feeling that energy, feeling, all right, this is, you know, I'm ready for this. What does it feel like? Oh, it just feels uh-huh. like confident this is, this is what I'm supposed yeah. to be doing. Yeah, and I'm not ready for a lot of things. Sometimes, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh, I wish I would get this part in a TV show. I'm like, what am I doing that's allowing? Why? Because I stayed up and I was partying all night. And then I'm like, I roll into an audition. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm supposed to book that part. Oh, I, you know, I feel shit. I didn't get it. I'm like, I never set myself up for that. If I wanted something, I would have gotten it. I didn't want it bad enough. Want something bad enough? I'm going to get it because I'm going to do those steps. It doesn't mean, I mean, but people will get it mixed up. Like, I don't. If I want to be a basketball player, I'm going to be one. No, it's like, come on, now you're taking what I'm saying too far. It's like, uh, it's hard to explain, but you just, you know, and you can't really, you just got to go with it. It's really, universe is really an awesome place. Everyone's really kind. And if you're kind right back, like if you just allow things to happen, if you're just open, honest, and you allow yourself to be fragile or, uh, you know, just aware or vulnerable, you know, it's a vulnerability. It gets back to that. It's like, oh, okay. You know, like, wait a second. You know, things could, I could collapse. I could, I could be stronger, you know. And, but you never met anyone that was doing something amazing that didn't fucking crumble at one point. That didn't, just you could lose everything. But you've got to be willing to risk everything to gain it, you know. And you can risk it right again. Yeah, so it's like, fucking, I, you know, you can lose everything in the world. Your ego, uh, ego is really the most important thing these days, right? More than money. <laughs> but yeah, you have to be willing to risk everything to get what you really want. And it, the, really the thing that we're really losing is this fake idea of who we were. And then we become this person that we're is even closer to our actual self, but not really a self because we're all connected. It's this universal self, you know? <laughs> so. All right, well, thank you so much. Thank you.